Okay. <laughs> so we, um, yes, good. We are celebrating uh, the final Lenten service. Uh, we have been looking at promised treasures, so tangible things that you can see and touch and smell and taste that uh, remind us of God's promises to us. Um, so I am happy to be with you again this evening. And, and I forget to say every week, but thank you to all of you who have provided the delicious meals for us. They've been wonderful, and I know that's some work to do, so thank you to everyone who contributed to that. Um, I also, this is a quick announcement, if anyone has any spare egg cartons, that uh, they need to be extra large. They can't be medium or uh, whatever, they need to be the big ones. Um, we could use them for our food pantry because um, Delbert Kathman's brother has a farm where he uh, raises chicken eggs for hatcheries, and if they're too big and have a double yolk, he can't use them for the hatchery, so he's donating them to our food pantry. So we need to, they're in big flats, and we need to separate them into smaller cartons so that we can give them to people who come to the pantry. So all that being said, if you have a stash of extra large egg cartons of any kind, if you'd bring them to the church, we could use them. Anybody have any other announcements this evening? All right, if not, we will begin with our opening hymn, which is Give Me Jesus, number 770 in the Red Hymnal.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our sake, God made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and with his stripes we are healed. Lord Jesus, search our hearts and minds that we may receive your word, share in your spirit, and be renewed in our relationships with you and with one another. With humble hearts, let us pray together. Lord Jesus, the Father's only Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, hear us as we pray. Our souls are hungry and in need. We waste away without your daily bread in our lives. Our rebellion against you in thought, word, and action is why you died for us to forgive our sins, to redeem our lives, and to cancel the debt we owe to God. With hearts that are humble and lives ever graceful, help us to receive your grace, bow before you in worship, and with us that you alone are Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, shows his mercy to us in the sending of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, the true bread from heaven, who satisfies the hunger of our souls. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight, our promised treasure is the oil of anointing. And so just as you came forward on Ash Wednesday and received the ashes as a sign of repentance and sorrow, I now invite you to come forward and receive the oil of anointing on your forehead as a sign of your baptism, forgiveness, and joy. You can come forward as you wish. by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Shar, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Beverly, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Lyle, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Melanie, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Jana, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Carla, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Steph, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked by the cross of Christ forever. Carol Lee, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Carrie, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Kay, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Lawrence, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Keith, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Adeline, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. 
Rick, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Lynetta, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Warren, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Gloria, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Mark, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Tom, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Kurt, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Larry, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with cross of Christ forever. Leah, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Let us pray. Oh God, you make even the darkness of night shine with our Lord's resurrection. Preserve in us the spirit of our adoption as your children, so that anointed with the oil of joy and gladness, we may rejoice in the new life we have been given. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul, since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. And invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me him whom I declare to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded him and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass by before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thank you, God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians, the second chapter. When I came to Troas to peach, preach the gospel of Christ, even though a door was open for me in the Lord, my spirit was not at rest because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I took leave of them and went on to Macedonia. But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession, and through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, a fragrance from death to death, to the other, a fragrance from life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, like so many, peddlers of God's word, but as men in sincerity, as commissioned by God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Please stand at the table. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. And Jesus called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. What are some of the most beautiful fragrances you can imagine? How about a freshly baked pan of chocolate chip cookies? How about a dozen beautiful roses? How about the smell of a baby freshly bathed and cuddling in your arms? How about the smell of freshly turned soil after a good soaking rain? Or the smell of beautiful Easter lilies on Easter morning? One of my favorite scents is the smell of irises in bloom. I've often wished that there was a perfume that could capture that fragrance. Fragrances that we smell are often never forgotten, leaving an indelible mark on our memories. The scent of vanilla might remind you of your grandmother's kitchen, or the scent of lilacs might bring back a memory from your childhood schoolhouse, which had lilacs planted along the fence. When I smell a certain combination of diesel fuel and soil, it reminds me of my dad, of hugging him after he'd spent a day out in the field on the tractor. And for my daughter, the smell of horse manure is a good smell. <laughs> a smell that reminds her of her love for her horse and all the great times they've had together. Today, you smell the sweet fragrance as you receive the oil of anointing. This anointing oil that I have is special to me, and it brings with it many memories. My group of LCMC pastors that I meet with, we, we got together one time and made anointing oil. And it has frankincense and myrrh and olive oil and pomegranate essence. It's reminiscent both of the gifts that the wise men brought to the baby Jesus 
and the spices that the women brought to his tomb to prepare his body in death. In the same way, this oil is used both to anoint the forehead of new Christians at their baptisms and to anoint those who are ill or dying, reminding us that life and death and then new life again, through all of those, we are sealed as God's children and secure in his arms. When we began this season of Lent, almost 40 days ago, we had dirty ashes placed on our foreheads. Ashes remind us of our sin, and they are a symbol of our need for repentance. But today, oil was placed on us. When you received the oil this evening, you were reminded of the richness of Christ's resurrection and the joy of baptism. Fragrant oil is a symbol of joy. In a way, your stinky, smelly, death-like self is crucified and buried with Christ in the tomb of Lent, only to arise completely new on Easter. This evening, you remember the new life you were given in your baptism by Jesus, just as he rose from the tomb to live forever. That's what fragrant and perfumed oil is all about, reminding you, just as Easter lilies around the cross or the altar do, that Jesus lives now and forever. If you read through the scriptures, you will see that the Holy Spirit's work in the lives of God's people is often outwardly marked with oil. Jacob blessed the rock of Bethel after God appeared to him twice. Moses anointed Aaron and all the priests. Prophets, priests, and kings were often anointed with oil as a way of marking them for special service. Saul, the first king of Israel, was the Lord's anointed, and that is why David never killed him, even though Saul pursued David relentlessly. David, as we heard tonight, was anointed by Samuel to be king, and lovingly expresses the joyful abundance of oil in Psalm 23. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. In the New Testament, Jesus was directly anointed by the Holy Spirit when he descended in the form of a dove at his baptism. Jesus, the Messiah, is the anointed one, in capital letters, who is the ultimate prophet, priest, and king. Since you are baptized into Christ, God's mark or seal of ownership is also placed on you, reassuring you that you are God's royal son or daughter, and in him you too are a priest and king. As St. Peter says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. In the early church, after new Christians were immersed in the waters of baptism, they rose up out of the water and were anointed with perfumed oil. This reminded all who were baptized that they were marked and sealed by the resurrected Christ. And that might be why St. Paul wrote about the work that he and Titus were doing in preaching the gospel by saying, for we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. As a Christian, your life is different than the lives of others. You were anointed with fragrant oil to remind you that you are a sweet and pleasing aroma to God. You are washed and baptized into the anointed one, Jesus Christ. You are, as St. Peter says, a living stone and anointed into a holy priesthood as the people of God. You are connected to Jesus, and the Holy Spirit dwells in you. Just as Aaron and all his sons and all the priests were anointed to offer sacrifices to God, now you offer your life and your body as an acceptable sacrifice to God. 
just as you are called to be a light in the dark places of the world. You are also called to share the pleasing, beautiful fragrance of the gospel that brings joy and delight to those around you. What you have to offer is the gift of peace and a release from fear because there is no fear of death for those who put their trust in Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I pray that the fragrance of the oil of anointing lingers with you, leaving an indelible and positive mark on your memory. I pray that you will always know how sweet you smell, not only to God, but to everyone around you because of the new life you have been given. You are baptized into Christ, and through his resurrection from the dead, you live wherever you go as a lovely, living sacrifice to God. As you prepare your hearts for Holy Week and then the gladness of Easter, remember that you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Our hymn is There is a Balm in Gilead, number 614.
Gracious God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for blessing us with the opportunity to meditate again on the cross of Christ and receive your promised treasures. Grant that the message of the Lamb of God, slain for our salvation, bring us the riches of your pardon and peace. Lead us to see that our sins caused Jesus great agony in the garden, that our sins nailed him to the cross of Calvary, that he was forsaken by his Father so that we might never be forsaken, and that he died so that we may live. Healing Savior, by the oil of joy and gladness, you anoint those who are baptized into your holy name and grant them healing in both body and soul. Keep us in everlasting communion with you, that by your word and spirit, our hearts may be prepared for our resurrection to eternal life. Holy Spirit, lift up troubled souls everywhere. Grant wholeness to those hurting in heart, body, and mind. Work your healing power in the lives of those in need and in the lives of all we name before you in our hearts. All glory, honor, and praise be to you with the Father and the Son, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. 
Our closing hymn is God Loved the World, number 323.